Why are both billionaires and millionaires spending millions of dollars to create these underground bunkers beneath the surface of Mother Earth? Is there a potential in the prophecies that the poles of Mother Earth are actually going to shift, bringing about catastrophic events on Mother Earth? And why does the United States government have an underground city currently being stocked with supplies for survival, but still deny it, even though we have footage of it today? An underground Pentagon and maps that are alleged to be maps of the future Earth after all these catastrophic events take place. My name is Spirit Man JT, and I'm gonna take you down that rabbit hole of truth, predictions, prophecy, in this edition of Billionaire Bunkers, Safe Zones, and the Future Earth. Should I move? Do I need to relocate? Am I currently living in a safe zone? Or do I need to move my family somewhere safer? I would like to move my family somewhere safer. Where perhaps should that be that I do move my family and relocate? This happens to be, since 2020 for some odd reason, the most popular question that I am asked amongst clients, people on YouTube, Rumble, and even my community on Subscribestar. Why is so many people asking this question? Why do so many people suddenly want to relocate? And why has so many people, a record-breaking amount ever in history, relocated and moved since the COVID lockdown in 2020? People moved out of state, out of country, moved all over the place. People are scattering all over the place. Why is that? Well, by now you know that the earth is changing and things are shifting. But prophecies going all the way back to the Hopi natives, the Lakota natives, and even Edgar Cayce and Nostradamus all speak about the same time and the same events. The same time and events that I've had visions of since I was a child and continue to have visions of. And that is a shifting of the poles occurring on the planet. Something that occurs on the planet, which is debated every 12,000 years, some say every 3,600 years or whatever. But it happens. There is scientific proof and evidence that shows all the way going back to the time of Noah's flood is all truth. Is that how, how much of that is uh, agreed upon that there could be a time where the magnetic poles actually shift? So yeah. this is science that they, they say that the last one was like 778,000 years ago and we're more we're like something like 200,000 years overdue. Um, but the Adam and Eve story, the theory of that is that these it happens in cycles of 6,500 years and that it's a 90 degree flip, but six days later or on the seventh day, it corrects right. itself. It's a, it's a planet flip 90 degree and that because of it, the earth essentially does a standstill. The sun will be direct, will basically stay in the same spot causing heating like we've never experienced and that the wind and the waters continue with their momentum because essentially the wind travels at approximately a thousand miles an hour at the equator so the theory is that when that event happens it's going to be cataclysmic and here's the wild thing is that in that document it says uh a continental sized tsunami being two miles high well i showed you the emi kusi volcano in africa in the sahara which is at eleven thousand three hundred feet that has salt as well as evidence of gastropods sea life That's two miles high yes and i'm like it's just it would make a lot of sense like if you look at the bible and involving like revelations and it's saying like six uh, days six days on the seventh day yeah. god rested in that document, it says six days, things start uh, simmering down a bit. And, you know, by day seven, things are start starting over new. So are we closing in on those times? Are we closing in on those prophecies of Nostradamus, Edgar Casey, the Hopi, and the Lakota? And will it even matter if you relocate or move somewhere else? I'm going to take you through this venture of the prophecies that talk about the earth shift and the pole shifting. I'm going to show you the maps that were first created by the natives and channeled through from spirit. Maps that go to Edgar Casey, and even a map from the United States Navy showing 
the potential of what the Earth will look like in the future. So what's the science behind this complete reversal of the magnetic pole? So real quick, this is the, I, I, the part that sets me off about this is that any article you ever read on this, it makes it crystal clear that this will not be apocalyptic. <laughs> Maybe we'll have some, no, we'll potentially have some satellite communication issues that could affect our power grid and telecommunication systems, and that's going to be unfortunate. But don't worry, it's not a doomsday. I'm like, okay, first of all, if the grid goes down, that is doomsday. Every article I ever read on geomagnetic pole shifts, they go out of their way to say, don't worry, it's fine. And I'm like, but yet... The evidence shows that it's accelerating. Back in just right. the 1990s, uh, it was traveling the pole. The North Pole was transitioning at 10 miles a year. Now it's at 40 year, or almost 40 miles. It's accelerating. That the evidence shows that when you've studied all the other volcanic rock uh, for prior known pole shifts, because keep in mind, there's hundreds that are known. This has happened throughout millions and millions of years. This is mainstream science. The poles do flip. They, they, but it's not that the Earth flips over. It's that the inside core does, and so your magnetic compass will flip. Like what causes it? Uh, so the whatever that molten core is, it does a shift inside. It allegedly happens in cycles, um, and we're long overdue. And when it happens, the other theory is that the the Earth's shields will be diminished. Well, it's definitely. So the magnet. We know two things right now: is that the the pole is moving. I'm going to end so this video by showing you the spiritual aspects, discussing with you whether it really matters if you move or not. Will it change or affect anything in your life if you move and relocate? We're going to cover all that today. My name is Joseph Tittle, a.k.a. Spearman JT, and I welcome you with infinite love and gratitude to my channel. If you want accurate predictions, prophecies, and truth, then you found your tribe. Be sure to smash that there, subscribe, and do give me a like somewhere along the line. Show the algorithms that you want my stuff and similar content to show up on your feet. Then a third angel sounded its trumpet, and a great star, flaming like a torch, fell from the heavens onto a third of the rivers and the springs of water. The name of that star is Wormwood. Is this prophecy directly from the Holy Bible, same as the prophecy of the Hopi natives, who call it the Red Kachina and the Blue Kachina? Or the Lakota, who call it the red star and the blue star. This aligns with so many prophecies. So is this the reason behind what's going on with billionaires and our government behind our backs secretly? Is there a comet or a meteor that might be heading towards Earth in our future? And the reason that there's underground cities? That's right. Full underground cities. Huge. Millions and millions of square feet. There's more than a dozen in the United States, allegedly, but also in Canada, we know that there's underground cities, Russia. And the thing with Russia is that their people are aware of it and are told to go there when times come and the earth's shaken or there's a nuclear war, the Russians are told where to go. The Russians are going to take care of their people. Do you think the United States and Canada is going to take care of you? Certainly not, but they're taking all of our tax dollar money and building these cities. Starting with this one in a place that's kind of obvious when you really think about it, because there's a TV show named after this little town. The Ozarks, that big region smack in the center of the United States, parts of Missouri, Arkansas, Kansas, and Oklahoma. The Ozarks, smack in the middle of the United States. So if the waters of the oceans were to rise, of course, being somewhere in the center of it all is more likely for you to survive. Not only that, the stone that's in the Ozark Mountains is easier and safer for them to dig their underground cities. But let us take the word Ozark for a moment, because this is interesting in itself. If we split the word Ozark, which is also like the television show, The Ozarks. Again, they put everything right in front of our faces to let us know without actually directly telling us. So we take the word Ozarks and we split it and we take Oz. Oz is very symbolic to many who believe the Illuminati exists, whether they do or not. Oz, like the Wizard of Oz, who's behind the curtain running everything, right? And then the second word we have is Ark, like Noah's Ark, exactly like Noah's Ark, actually. We could even say Ark of the Covenant, but we'll go with Noah's Ark. Makes more sense, doesn't it? that the persons or the governments and all that are hiding behind the curtain 
doing all these things with billions of dollars of our tax money without giving us a ticket of entry. We have Oz behind the curtain, which is the government and the elite, of course, which many call, again, the Illuminati or the deep state or the cabal or whatever. I call them a bunch of sickos that worship Lucifer. And then we have the Ark. So do they believe that that's their Ark right in the center of the United States to save all those within our country that are high elite members and government members? Most likely, yeah, that's exactly the case. So let's take a deeper look into this place. The following clip comes from Jesse Ventura in a TV show that goes back a good 10 to 12 years ago, Jesse Ventura's Conspiracy Theories. And in this video, a man by the name of White Rabbit, because he wants to be unidentified and secret, takes Jesse Ventura and his team to these underground caves in this underground city. First, they investigate this fortress that's being built or now has been built in the Ozark. This whole entire fortress that was built is bulletproof and built with thick concrete steel reinforced walls built again by a billionaire who actually happens to be someone who was in the CIA and also does military contracting and is a billionaire. How do you go from the CIA to a billionaire? Which takes us to this clip where Jesse and his team go to the outside of these tunnels that are well guarded by police and security. Of course it is. Check it out. White Rabbit leads the team on a long drive to an underground facility with security and guards. We, we start to actually go to the game. We tried the high road, now we're taking the low road. We're gonna try and infiltrate this fortress from below. A sprawling multi-million square foot bunker. Taylor made protection from an Armageddon of their own creation. The only thing that I question in this next clip of this amazing underground city is the fact that we just saw that there's security outside and it's guarded and what have you. And then they just so happened to drive right into the place. So really, were they let in or did they really sneak in? Regardless, we get a sneak peek of something that's really freaking amazing. And keep in mind as you look at this, if you're an American, you helped pay for it. This place isn't only the largest underground facility in the area. They say it's the largest in the world. Look at this. They got room for two lanes of 18 wheelers. The road literally goes on for miles. Look, there, it's branching off again. Who knows where that leads? After spending more than a week of compiling all this information together for y'all and uploading it, suddenly it wasn't available in more than 100 countries. Go figure. What do they not want you to see? I was forced to edit out several parts of this video, including my footage of the underground Pentagon. Of course they don't want you to see that. So I do encourage you to do your own research on your own, and hopefully this video will do fine now. And I encourage you to please share this with as many people as you possibly can. In this next clip, in the beginning, you'll hear him talk about there being an underground railroad connected to this underground city. Absolutely unbelievable. And this thing's hooked up to the railroad, too. This facility covers 50 million square feet, all underground, all climate controlled. They got warehouses for food, data, all sorts of things. Offices, manufacturing, even underground farming, and stockpiles of crude oil. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of space to live in. You can fit thousands of people here. And to really validate that this is definitely an underground city for the elite and everyone else, and to ensure that they're able to get there, right across the street is railroad tracks, which allows them to be coming in by train. There's also a huge, large parking lot filled with buses and energy vehicles. What's that all about? Heading out to pick up all the people? Did you also know there's one zip code right there in the Ozarks? that has more retired colonels and generals than anywhere else in the world or anywhere else in the United States. 
Why are all the generals in all the high up military heads moving right next to the Ozarks in one zip code? Something to think about. We head back into daylight, and what do you know? Just across the way, railroad tracks. And parking lots full of buses and green energy vehicles. It's like they got door-to-door -door transportation for the chosen few. When it's time to move inside, and well, those doors shut. Now, isn't that just wild? Huge millions of square footage underground city with everything you need but nobody's supposed to know about it. Again, this ensures us that this is for the elite and you don't get a ticket to go in there. I wouldn't even doubt that that also is connected to specific bloodlines to ensure that certain bloodlines, or some may say the reptilians, can live on and come back out and create the new world when everything shifts and changes. And keep in mind, this is just one underground city that's been exposed. There are dozens of dumbs in the United States, deep underground military bases that have been exposed, which all probably connect to the city in the center of the Ozarks. No doubt about it. And again, not just in the United States, other countries too. And they had to take them decades to build that. And they're still working on it and shipping food in there. So we're closing in on that time, whatever that time is and whatever they're preparing for. They're going to leave us on the outside why they all live it up on the inside. Not only did we see the underground facility and city in the Ozarks, but our government has many of these underground cities and many of them are connected by an underground railroad system. And we know there's one underneath the White House too. But did you know that there's literally an underground Pentagon? That's right. An underground Pentagon, and this place is amazing. Raven Rock is an underground backup Pentagon. It's the most unbelievable place you can imagine. This underground Pentagon is 768 feet down into the earth before you reach this bunker a half mile through. You go through the first door, which is a three and a half foot thick steel concrete reinforced door airlocked and airtight, and you go through two of these airlock doors. Once you enter through the two airlock doors, you walk about a half mile down to the bunker. And this bunker is unbelievable. Inside, we have the presidential suite. The presidential suite is secure, kept away from all others within this underground bunker. And to get a peek inside, you can even see that there is a separate bedroom with a king-size bed. There's even a kitchen that feeds up to 30 people. The presidential office is a duplicate of what they have in the actual Pentagon that overlooks the war room, where those down in the war room only see a mirror, but the president can stand up above and watch everything that's going on, just like he's in the Pentagon but he's in the underground Pentagon. They may like to tell us that these things were built back during the 1950s because of the worries of nuclear war with Russia and the whole Cold War situation that was happening in that time period. But at the same time, many of these are still being worked on and being supplied with food, water, and everything that's needed. So no doubt that they may have started building them in the 50s and using that as their excuse but in reality, they deny the whole existence of these facilities, even though we know they exist. Underground billionaire bunkers. Underground bunkers has become a huge commodity over the past decade, and it just keeps growing more and more with people putting these little bunkers in their backyards. But really, in reality, how long can you survive in one of those little bunkers? Now, the underground city, yeah, you could survive there for decades, literally but not in your little underground bunker. Jeff Bezos, billionaire, soon to be a trillionaire, has done some pretty odd things with all that money. One thing that he did, which isn't really that odd, was buying an entire mountain range in Texas, kind of in the middle of nowhere, and a landing strip to get him and his people to this mountain. But the odd thing that he did with his money is Bezos spent $52 million digging into this mountain to build 
what he calls a 10,000 year clock. A 10,000 year clock. What is that all about? And we already know that his underground bunker is in the same location, even though it hasn't been revealed. But look at this crazy structure and all the work that went into building this underground 10,000 year old clock. What is he trying to do something like the Aztecs with the clock? This is really kind of strange when we look at it, but not so strange that he's building an underground home and mansion in the same location that you can only access from an airstrip. He's not the only one. Bill Gates and many others have these wild underground bunkers with movie theaters, all kinds of stuff to keep them entertained while everybody else is on the outside, including nature, suffering. This is really something to think about and something that we need to consider. But we can also consider that the Ozarks is a safe zone. So there's your first safe zone, the Ozarks. How safe will you be above ground though? That's the question. These underground mansions have become a huge commodity for millionaires and billionaires. There's even a company called Oppidum, which you can find here on YouTube. I'm gonna show you some clips from Oppidum for what they advertise as their highly secure underground sanctuaries that you enter in and can even drive your vehicle down into. As you drive down, you go through your secure location and look at what you get to experience. See what a couple million dollars will do for you. One zone that people may think is a safe zone, and a lot of people do believe that, including the millionaires and billionaires. And that place would be New Zealand, where over the past decade, and especially over the past five years, millionaires and billionaires have been buying up land and building their alleged underground fortresses. Take a look at some of these pictures of all these amazing underground mansions and fortresses. There's three hotspots in New Zealand, as you see here on the map, that shows where the elite love to run and hide. But really, is New Zealand a safe zone? Personally, I don't know if it would be. There's volcanoes surrounding the whole area of New Zealand. And not only that, it's an island. I don't know if I'd want to be on an island unless I was at the highest peak of the mountain. And will these underground tunnels flood? Well, we know the underground Pentagon won't flood because it has airtight seals on the doors. At this point, you're probably asking one of two questions. So where is it that I should reside to be safe? And the second question is, will I even be safe on the outside? Two really legitimate questions. In the future, I will do a video on the prophecies of the Hopi and the Blue Kachina and the Red Kachina and a potential date that I truly believe that this is going to happen. So be sure to subscribe down below, click the bell and the all so that you don't miss future videos and the date when I put it out as to when I believe this comet or meteor could potentially hit. Not just... So where are the safe zones and what maps are there that show potential safe zones? There's actually a lot of maps and potentially a lot of safe zones. We already know that the Ozark Mountains and according to many millionaires and billionaires in New Zealand, but I believe a lot of millionaires and billionaires ran off to New Zealand because of everything that was happening between United States and everything in Europe and so forth. And that's their getaway to unplug from all that. I don't necessarily believe that that's where their, their center bunkers are for survival, but there could be, but I don't believe that that would be the safest place to be. So let's take a look at some of the maps and prophecies and things that have been passed down with the future maps, starting with the natives, the indigenous natives of both North America and South America. They all call North America Turtle Island. And when I was in Peru working with the shaman Puma, Puma told us a story about his great grandfather talking about the great shift of Mother Earth. And when the great shift comes, his great grandfather spoke that Turtle Island would be washed away on both sides like a sinking turtle. And that's mainly North America, United States, and Canada. Turtle Island is mainly made up of North America, both United States and Canada, as you see in this depiction. Turtle Island was the first prophecy going back to the ancient people and the one that we can track back the furthest. 
even though the Aztecs and many others warned us of future events and cataclysmic events. But the map is really what you want to see. So let's start off with Edgar Casey. In case you're not familiar with Edgar Casey, Edgar Casey is known as the Sleeping Prophet from the United States. And Edgar Casey's legend goes on with his prophecies and things that he talked about, including the shifting of the poles. This is what Edgar Casey had to say when it comes to the shift Mother Earth and the places that would be devastated the most. Edgar Casey predicted that in the future, beginning in the late 1950s all the way up to the turn of the century, we would witness major changes in our climate and our weather patterns, along with an increase of volcanic activity and earthquake activity. Now, isn't that what we're witnessing right now on the planet? 20 years past that beginning of the new century, but we're definitely witnessing that. Casey also predicted that there would be a 16 to 20% shift in Mother Earth's poles. Edgar Casey also warned that Mount Etna in Italy and Mount Paley in Marnicu would both erupt at the same exact time. And according to researchers of Casey's work, both volcanoes erupting at the same time would be a big warning that you will have approximately 90 days to evacuate the West Coast before a huge flood comes and sinks the West Coast of the United States and Canada both. Edgar Casey described the United States as being in complete chaos. And in turn, both San Francisco and Los Angeles would be the first two to fall victim to this devastating earth shift. In one of Casey's readings, he described that both San Francisco and Los Angeles would be amongst the first to fall, and that would be followed by the fall of New York City. New York City would disappear along with it, and New York City would slip into the Atlantic Ocean. Casey stated that the Great Lakes would empty out into the Gulf of Mexico. Edgar Casey also stated in a separate reading that Japan would be swallowed up completely by the oceans and the upper portion of Europe would remain devastated. Homeowners in Japan may need to check their building structural integrity. Environment Ministry officials have released data showing unprecedented subsidence since the March 11th earthquake. The official said following the quake, nearly 6,000 square kilometers of land sank by more than two centimeters. When Edgar Casey was asked if Virginia Beach was a safe zone. He actually confirmed that it was a safe zone, which I disagree with. But at the same time, the Edgar Casey Institute is located in Virginia Beach. Casey also stated that portions of Ohio, Illinois, and Indiana would be safe zones, along with the eastern part of Canada. But of course, the western parts would be totally devastated. Overall, Edgar Casey also reminded us that both prayer and the right mindset and consciousness could alter the events in which he foresaw. Edgar Casey did a great job at mapping out through his predictions and prophecy the potential future Earth after a great catastrophe in the poles shift. The fact is that Casey never actually drew a map. There's only maps that can be based on Casey's prophecies and readings, but he never actually drew a map. So when you go online and look for maps, remember there really isn't a Edgar Casey map, but there's another map. Map has been long called the U.S. Navy map. But is it really a U.S. Navy map? When I was trying to dig deep about the U.S. Navy map, other than finding out that it was a post on Facebook, I also discovered a person by the name of John R. Moore. John R. Moore's Navy map. There's actually a website called The Liberty Man, and it's a website by a gentleman by the name of John Moore. That's where I found this particular map. And this little map here looks different than some of the other U.S. Navy maps. So it's confusing as to what's real and which one's not. But if John Moore is the Liberty Man and the same person, then we would have to take that this is actually his map. I don't know where it came from. He's got a military background, of course, but I'm not sure where that map came from. So again, there's no documentation that I could find to prove where exactly it came from. 
They say that Gordon Michael Scallion's maps of the future actually align closest with what Casey described in his visions. In 1979, Scallion was a successful electronics advisor when he suddenly lost his voice. Soon after, he checked into the hospital. While lying in the hospital bed, a ball of light appeared near the door and creeped closer to him. Soon the ball of light was above him and a woman's face appeared and began to talk to him, telling him to write things down as she says. The woman told him that there'd be great earth changes in the future, including an increase of volcanic activity and earthquake activity. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? A little bit like Edgar Casey. The woman told Scallion events that would occur over the next month in his life over the next few years, including again earthquakes, airplane crashes, and many other events. Immediately after this apparition of the woman, Scallion's voice immediately returned like a miracle. So he soon checked himself out of the hospital. Deeply unsettled by the entire experiences, Scallion tried to dismiss everything, but the visions of the future wouldn't stop. Finally, in 1989, Scallion had a series of 29 what he calls disturbing dreams that dealt with the earth changes all over the planet and visions of what the future earth would actually look like. He began writing these down and, of course, putting them out in books and material to sell. Scallion predicted that there would be three major earthquakes in California, two back-to-back -back followed by a third one, and that third earthquake would be an 8.3 on the Richter scale, breaking apart the whole West Coast all the way from Oregon down to LA and breaking it into islands. So in 1992, there were two earthquakes back-to-back -back within that year. Scallion went about in his newsletter to say that by 1995, that third earthquake would come breaking California into the water, but it never came. Now we're decades later and it still hasn't come. Is his timing off? Well, obviously it is, but timing is the absolute hardest thing to do when it comes to predictions. I know from personal experience that putting a timeline on a prediction is the hardest part about making predictions. That's why most do not put out a timeline. So here's another view of some of the maps that Scallion put out in his visions, including the first map of the entire planet. We have the map of the United States. And the map of the United States is very much where they say the U.S. Navy map came from. People claim that someone took apart Scallion's map and made it into their own and called it the U.S. Navy map. But now we know our government is on top of prophecy, prediction, psychics, and all that. And they know a heck of a lot more than what they're telling us. And remember, they got that city in the center of the United States. And if you look at all these maps, the center of the United States is still above water. Many of the things that Scallion said completely align with Edgar Cayce's predictions and actually some of those of Nostradamus as well. So was he a copycat or did he really have visions? If we're all tapping into the same visions, we're going to come up with similarities. But again, they say his maps are so close to what Edgar Cayce described. And you can see the maps here yourself. Most of the future maps, when you look them up, are all that of the United States. But Scallion was able to put out maps of the entire world. Scallion even showed parts of Africa and what Africa would look like in the future. And again, you be the judge of this. I want to hear your comments down below what you believe and what you think. Dolores Cannon Dolores Cannon was a past life regressionist, an author, and hypnotherapist who specialized in the recovery and the cataloging of lost knowledge. Working through several different subjects, Dolores was able to establish a connection with the late Nostradamus. His revelations and their impact on our own time are both fascinating and somewhat little frightening as well. This is the map that Dolores channeled through from Nostradamus. The black spots on the map show what land actually still exists. So anything outside of the black spots is underwater. 
I agree with Dolores Cannon when she says that we shouldn't worry and go into fear over this. Because as she explains and she believes that we are going to enter into a different dimension. And therefore, there would be no need to worry about this dimension and the shifting of the Earth. She explains it here. The Earth is separating. We're going to be going into a totally different dimension by raising the frequencies and vibrations of the Earth. It will shift into a new dimension. And this is the greatest show on Earth because they said all the beings and all the universes are watching because this has never happened to any in any year of universe anywhere that an entire planet will shift into a new dimension and when this happens it's like two earths as though they split the old earth is left behind with all the negativity and all the chaos and the new earth separates and it will be totally new and beautiful now those who have raised the vibrations and frequencies of their bodies will shift into the new earth a lot of this is happening right now. And I saved the best and the most interesting one for last. And that is the story of Al Bielik. That's right. Al Bielik is a supposed time traveler who was born in the year 1927 and was a part of the Philadelphia Experiment. If you're not familiar with the Philadelphia Experiment, I do encourage you to look up that story and even watch the movie too. Al Bielik says that he went into the future, and when he went into the future, he described everything he saw, including drawing a map. I'm going to show you a little clip of an interview with Al Bielik explaining a little bit of what happened to him. I'll put the links down below in the video so that you can check out more about Al Bielik and some of the other topics that we covered here today. But check this little interview piece out by Al Bielik, the time traveler from 1927 to the united states and i noticed severe changes in the coastlines and the interior and uh the fact that europe was didn't look at all like what i had remembered it and i started asking questions what's happened what's going been going on that's when they uh said i want to see maps of what's happened and some description I said it looks like there's been major earth changes and i said yes there have been it all happened in the period between uh, the beginning of the 21st century and basically the year 2025. Now, well, what happened? So they told me, they showed me maps and did describe it briefly. Uh, the East Coast of the United States was rather heavily changed, not as much as the West Coast. I want to point out to you the time period in which Al Bielik claimed that these events were going to happen on our planet. He said the turn of the century the year 2020, with the most devastation occurring in the year 2025. We're halfway through that period of time right now. And already since 2020, we saw the huge, massive, historic volcanic eruption of La Palma. And even more powerful were the massive earthquakes that struck both Turkey and Syria, pretty much leveling both countries to the ground. So is Al Bielik on to something? One thing that really struck a chord with me was the year 2025 because if you've been following me long enough you know that i've been talking about the year 2025 for a very long time now two years ago i did a video called tribulation 2025 to 2032 because in vision spirit showed me and told me that that year in that cycle 2025 to 2032 would be the most challenging cycle on planet earth for humanity ever do I feel that this is going to happen soon? I don't believe it's going to be that soon. But yes, 2025 will bring about massive quakes. 2029 jumps out at me more. And I'll talk about that in a future video. In this next clip, also take notice how Bielik mentions some of the other maps that I discussed with you here today. And he says those maps, like the map of Scallion, is a worst case scenario as to the Earth's poles shifting. Whereas he claims that it's not nearly as bad as what those maps actually show. I'll leave links below to the rest of this interview and other information so you can go and read all about it yourself. Let's hear what else Al Bielik has to say. And for that matter, none of the changes I saw would uh, fit some of the uh, very far out maps promulgated in the late 20th century 
by various people such as the I Am America group and uh, Michael Gordon Scanion and his series of maps. They were what I would consider the worst case possible scenario and it didn't happen that way. But what I did see was changes in the East Coast, uh, particularly in went south towards where Georgia, Carolinas and Georgia is. The Georgia coastline uh, going inland so that Atlanta, instead of being uh, about 100 miles from the ocean, was only three miles from the ocean. A lot of the east coast of Georgia was gone. Parts of uh, North Carolina had been chopped off. Florida was gone completely except for the uh, area of the panhandle. Was this on the TV programs that you I saw, saw or did they give you a map? I saw this in references on the TV program, okay. uh, which they showed pictures of the coastline in reference to something else that we're dealing with. And I see this, I said, what is this? This isn't the way I remember it. So that's when I started asking what's going on, and I, they gave me the maps. Uh, the Gulf Coast was drastically changed. There was about a 50-mile-wide swath north of where we knew the Gulf Coast to be, as it is today, in the beginning of the 21st century. And uh, about 50 miles wide was just gone. It was underwater, which means New Orleans was gone, Houston was gone, uh, Corpus Christi, Texas was gone as such, though it was just barely, because that's a little higher ground there. It was this lowlands that went. And I don't think it was geographic upheaval. It was just a case of the ocean waters have been rising, uh, plus other changes. And the big change in the middle of the country was that the Mississippi became an inland waterway, and a rather wide one, all the way up to the Great Lakes, which then became one lake. Uh, part of the original lakes disappeared, and other parts uh, sank so that you had one large lake there, which joined with the St. Lawrence Seaway, which became a very large seaway. And the, west, the rest of the U.S., the western part, to the other side of the new Mississippi Basin, if you will, was all there, essentially intact, with the exception of California and parts of Oregon and small parts of Washington. California suffered from where the San Andreas Fault came in land. San Andreas Fault cuts into California between San Francisco and San Jose. That's where it cuts inland. It's no longer in the ocean, but it's cutting across land. It goes down basically central California so that when you get past Los Angeles, it winds up cutting through the middle of the Salton Sea. Whatever you do, do not base your life decisions on any of these maps, nor on the potential of there being some catastrophic event on the planet Earth. What I've learned from this and the visions that I have more than anything, this allows me to focus more every day on the blessings and miracles that flow into my life. Because this certainly is a beautiful planet with many beautiful blessings and miracles. And living each day as if it's your last, no matter what, and not worrying where you need to go or where you need to move to. Pray, meditate, and tap into your own intuition because we are all psychic and intuitive. Follow your gut and do what's best for you that helps you to celebrate your life each and every day. See, we all come into this life with soul contracts. And whether you believe it or not, you signed up for all these contracts and agreements prior to entering into this current lifetime. Also within your soul contracts are exit points. Some people have just one simple exit point or death date, so to speak. Many of us, if not most of us, have multiple exit points. Have you ever had any close calls in life where you swore that you weren't gonna survive? Did you ever almost get hit by a vehicle or some other crazy story? Perhaps there's some decision that you made that prevented you from fulfilling that part of your soul contract. Our soul contracts are very complex, very detailed. And that's why we have a team of spirit guides to guide us through this life and others within the spiritual community that can guide us in different ways. Whether it's seeing somebody that does energy work or therapy or what have you. But there's all these tools surrounding us that we usually never utilize. So going back to the question, where should you move? Where should you relocate? Did you also know that your astrological chart, an astrological chart, is based on the exact time, date, and place of your birth. They can line up your astrological chart with a map geographically. 
showing you where you are connected deeply and where you need to live and relocate. That form of astrology is actually called astrocartography. And with astrocartography, again, they can pinpoint areas on the globe that are best for your vibration as far as the planets that rule over your life and your soul contracts. Is if it's in your soul contract that you have an exit point, and that exit point is because of a tidal wave, a heart attack, or a disease, that's the way it's gonna play out. So technically, it really doesn't matter where you live on the planet. You're right now, you are exactly where you need to be and exactly where you should be for now. Be open always to the universe that you are ready, willing, able, and capable of going anywhere in the world that universe directs you that brings you to that level of joy and happiness you never believed possible. Keep that intention every day. Be willing to go anywhere and it'll show up in your life and you'll know when it shows up that that's where you should go. But if it's not in your soul contract or your soul contract says that you're going to stay put in the city of Philadelphia, then you're going to stay put in the city of Philadelphia. But we have great potentials. Our soul contracts have many branches like a tree, many directions that we can venture down each and every day. So if you're feeling pulled and not happy and joyful where you live, then you are definitely not where you could be that would bring you to a higher level of joy. You are where you need to be for now, but there could likely be somewhere that's much better in the future. Keep that focus. Keep that intention. Unplug from the fear. Because there's nothing that we can do about it. Again, if it's going to happen on the planet, we signed up for it. If you want to be safe, the safest you can be is meditating, prayer, connecting with your guides, and going with big changes when they are opening up for us. Be willing to go wherever the universe takes you. And you're going to find a level of joy and happiness that you are going to have to pinch yourself every day, not believing that that actually exists on the planet and in your lifetime. I do it every day. Grateful that I listen to my guides direct me to Arizona. And I look forward to the amazing things that come from this. People would tell me, oh, well, you're in Arizona and Arizona is going to go in the water with California. Well, you saw some of the maps. That's not true. And I'm in a canyon. I'm safe. I know I'm safe. And even if I were to go into the water, then that's my sole contract and I'm okay with that. So be okay with your life mission as well. Be okay with your soul contracts, but also be open and willing to make that shift in a completely different direction because we have so many potential future destinies. And sadly, most humans don't go on the path that brings us to the best potential future destiny, a level of abundance, joy, and happiness that we may have never dreamed was possible, but it's very possible. Some people are going to be running around screaming, Armageddon's here, oh my God, the world's coming to an end. But then there's going to be the other group of people that say, today's a beautiful, amazing day. What can I get done today? What amazing things can I accomplish today to work into tomorrow? What side of the platform are you going to be on? I know what side I'm on. And I plug into predictions and prophecy and see visions constantly in my brain that are very disturbing. But I learn to unplug from those visions. I do my work here. I unplug and know that I'm safe until my contract on this planet and in this lifetime is up. When it's up, I'll move on into the heavens like we all have the potential to do as well. So again, unplug from that fear, friends. Know that you can be anywhere in this world that you would least likely expect to be, to be joyful. Be open, be ready, and let the universe bring the blessings and miracles into your life. Let the universe be your guide and your director. Listen to your first instinct. Your first instinct is never wrong. That is your intuition. That comes from your master spirit guides or guardian angels that were pointed to you from birth. Listen to it. The more you do, the better you're going to become at it, the much better decisions you're going to make in your life and in your future. I want to hear your opinion on all of this. Safe zones, places to go, places that you think are good. I appreciate all of your comments down below. Don't forget to give me a click on that like button because that really helps out the channel, helps us get to more people and helps this stuff show up on your feed. Newcomers, I thank you for joining this tribe and smashing that subscribe. My name is Joseph Tittle. I wish you the best and hope you have a great day. Remember to be kind to others as you wish others be kind to you because we all know mean people suck. No good at all. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.